Hi, my name is Jeff Goodwin, and I'm going to give you a very basic demo on a very basic watercolour. This is um, one I've just done, and I thought I'd just do this again for you. Just some, um, some trees in the background, some scrub, um, some swamp land. It could be swamp land or just some sort of a water outlet there. And uh, it's just basic watercolours. I'll be doing a few of these, different ones, obviously. Um, so I'll see if I can reproduce what I just did. It won't be exactly the same, obviously. So I'll move this aside. I only have newspaper on my table to protect the table. Um, I'm using, I'll show you what I'm using for paper. Just this uh, basic Montmartre watercolor pad. It's uh, a 300 GSM paper and this is just simply an A4 size. A4 size, uh, they're great to frame, they're cheaper to frame because they're smaller. Um, actually A4 size that is, A4 size are cheaper to frame because they're smaller but I occasionally do A3 size watercolours as well. So, fresh piece of A4 watercolour paper. I don't like how that's sitting up like that but I might need to tilt it down a bit more and we'll see how we go. Alright so what I'm going to do is uh, start off the Montmartre paper. I'm also using these Montmartre paints, watercolour paints. They're okay, I mean they're not expensive paints but they're not um, paints that will go bad on you either. So they're the Montmartre watercolour paints. Um, and I've just got a basic palette where I put some of these paints in there, some of the colours I think that I'll need as well. So I'll start off uh, with a pencil sketch and uh, I'm looking at some sort of a, just a, a horizon line, just have to excuse my hand being in the way. Uh, something like that. And there's some trees in the background. As you notice on our original one there, you can see these trees in the background. Okay, so we'll just put some, um, just some rough marks there. I like to sketch out a little bit very lightly what it'll be. Some watercolour artists, they don't, some of them don't sketch at all. They just go straight onto the paper. Uh, I'm not the best watercolour artist around by a long shot. I do mainly basic watercolours, but as I keep doing these watercolours, I tend to get uh, more confident and, and better in doing them. And you will too. And I'm simply just giving you um, a demo on very basic watercolour paintings, very basic ones, that I think that if anyone does these with a bit of practice and patience, you'll be able to do these in no time because they're so basic. These are foreground trees that I'm just drawing in here. These ones in the background are, are trees that are sort of in the distance, obviously, being in the background. I'm just going to draw a couple of just a couple of trees coming up here. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that sketching there. It looks like you can. It looks okay from my end anyway. Three or two up in here, a couple of trees there, okay, um, so some of the foreground here,
So it's sort of water course there. In this area here is where I intend to put some of the water. You can put the water down first and then do, do the, uh, the sides, the ground, or you can do the ground first and then do the water, whatever you prefer. In this one here, I did the ground first and then I put the water in straight after. But I may go the other way this time, who knows. All right, so that's a basic sketch there. Just see how we go now. So I've just got a big container of water just to show you what I'm using. I use uh, basically two, two size brushes. This one here, you can see a nice fine point on that brush. And also this size brush as well. It's a bit thicker. That'll hold more water and more paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna do, you can go, you can wet your paper first just with your, your wet brush, just with uh, water and wet your, your paper first and then put your color on. This time I'm just gonna put watercolor on dry paper and see how we go. I'm using some blue here, just mixing this up. I'm sorry you can't see all that, but that's the blue I'm using, just mixing it up. And I'm just wetting the brush a bit more. I'm trying to load the brush up, as you can see here, with as much uh, water. Really saturate that brush with water there. Okay, and I'm just gonna do, go and do this sky here. There are different techniques of doing skies. This is just one technique I do. And I'll show you some other ones as we progress doing these watercolor uh, videos. So that's a basic sky there. All right, so we want those background trees in there. I might put them in next. And some of that sky that I put in has actually gone over where I want some of the trees so some of that blue colour has gone into where I want the trees, but that's okay because that colour should cover that nicely. But I want to do a fairly light colour in there anyway. So uh, we'll see how we go with that. Also to the foreground, that can have multiple colours. Um, so I'm, I'm wanting to put a, a green in there and maybe some yellow ochre, perhaps some some other colour in there, some brownie sort of colour in through here. And then eventually I'd like to have a, a few pieces of um, grass or reeds or something coming out into the foreground as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up now some yellow ochre with a, with a tiny bit of black, just to give the distance of those trees in the background. Let's see how we go anyway. So I might use a smaller brush for this one. So I'm using a slightly smaller brush. Yep. And I'm just gonna mix a tiny, tiny bit of black with some of this yellow ochre. I want it really light because these, um, these trees are in the background here, in the distance a bit. Not too far in the distance, but they're in the distance. So I don't want real solid colors through those trees there. Okay, I'm just mixing up a bit more, sorry guys.
So these are some of these background trees. And some of this color we can actually bring down. Looks like that sky has dried just enough there so that watercolour paint isn't bleeding into the sky. That's sort of what I wanted anyway. I didn't really want it to bleed into the sky too much. Sometimes if that happens, it's okay, but uh, just as long as it doesn't bleed into the sky too, too much. So a little bit more... Some more trees here. You see how I'm doing these trees? Just sort of flicking it around, leaving leaving a little bit of um, colour be little colour bit behind there, some gaps there. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so that's basically what I'm after, something like that. Here are some of the trees in the background. I'm going to put a little bit of green or I've got this um, uh, real sort of like an olive green. Uh, there it is there. I'm just sort of getting a bit of olive green. I'm going to put it here because I'd like to get a little bit of green coming through and I don't care if it bleeds, that's fine. That's what I'm wanting there anyway. Doesn't have to be exact just to give the impression of some undergrowth there, maybe a bush or two. It's getting a bit light. The thing is with watercolours, they um, they look really good when they first go on, and they do, but they tend to dry lighter. So you've got to be aware of that. They tend to dry lighter as you um, as they dry. They, they dry lighter that compared to when you've just first put the colour on. Okay, that's all right. Very basic, as I said. I want to put some of these um, foreground trees in, but just before I do that, I might just put that water on to give the water time to dry while I'm doing the foreground trees. So I'm going to use a, a fairly light water here, um, and I might put a little bit of darker blue over the top of it. So you can just see that light blue there. Right, I'm just putting a little bit, just wetting that brush as much as I can. I'm using a smaller brush here. All right, because I want this to um, I want this to give it a chance to dry while while I'm doing the um, working on the trees some more. So just giving this a bit more chance to dry by doing this first.
bump the camera there, sorry guys. I'm still using the same blue, only I'm not watering it down as much in these parts here, so it goes on a little bit darker in some parts. All right, and I might even put a little bit of darker blue now, just to give a little bit more depth or tone. Okay. Oh, sorry guys. I so carried away, I forgot the camera was there. A little bit of reflection, as you can see, of... Um, some of those trees. Okay, a little bit more water maybe. All right, so let's do some of those uh, trees there. We want to um, finish these trees, so I'm going to use a bit of uh, this colour here. It's a uh, burnt umber. All right, so I'll just take this out of the tube now. I want to water this down uh, pretty much as well. But I want it to be pretty clear that it's in the foreground, if you know what I mean. some more of this for maybe just up here Maybe something in the, in the air, just really light in the background. You can see that's quite quite light there. Uh, again, these watercolors dry lighter than when you put them on, so you've got to be aware of that. Maybe a little bit of brown in here. Couple of flecks up in there here, maybe. I don't want leaves, too many leaves on these um, trees. I just want them to be uh, without leaves. These are the trees I'm about to do. You'll see what I mean in a second.
Okay, let's, um, let's have a look at some of these um, trees that I was talking to you about. I want to put some of this, um, I want to put some of this black. Uh, it's just a lamp, lamp black. Lamp black, they call it. So, put a bit more in here. Get some on the brush. I'm just going to do some of these um, tree branches now. And you can go very, very lightly. I like to just um, keep going until I've got um, a fairly light line. And sometimes you, need, you just need a bit of practice on this. Just touching, just slightly touching the page. And just um, putting some fine lines in here. And I'm using this black just to just to mark in the foreground a bit more now, just to make it a little bit more distinct. Okay, so now I'm going to put some of the um, uh, foreground in, which is on this original one we did, just around the edges. So I'm going to use um, a bigger brush for this. Uh, and I'm going to use some yellow ochre. Might be exactly the same as the other one. And I'm going to use a little bit of... Um, tiny bit of green or olive, olive green in here. Okay, so I'd like a lot a bit more I like a bit more olive green showing through here. Tiny bit more perhaps.
All right, so we'll go to the other side now. Just a bit of olive green mixed with a bit of yellow ochre. Oops, sorry about that bump on that camera again. Use a thinner brush for this bit here. Bit of reflection there. All right, so I just want to put some um, uh, just some light colour. This tree seems to be standing out too much on its own, so I want, want some really light um, colour just in here, maybe. Just to sort of break that up a bit there. Bit of black in with that olive green just gives it a tiny bit of tiny bit of depth there All right, so I just kind of want some. I just want some um, some foliage or or something here in the foreground. That's a that's a sort of a more of a um, uh, a sap green. I'm using now. I'm using. An olive green now.
And maybe, maybe um, I don't know, sometimes you see these sort of areas and there could be some sort of a, a tree trunk there with a branch. Laying there in the foreground. And that's just about it. There's only one thing left to do. Signature there. All right, I don't want to tip it up too much because the paint will run, but I could just show you there. There it is, just a basic swampy area there with some trees in the background and some water, a bit of reflection there, some grass, really, really simple stuff. As I said, I'm not the best watercolour artist in the world by, by a long shot, but I'm just giving you some ideas on some basics, which can get you started, and if you keep practising, you get better and better. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe, because this is uh, um, brand new, this channel. I've got no subscribers right now, so uh, I would appreciate you subscribing, and uh, I'll be doing many, many more watercolours uh, for you as well and even showing you some of the ones that I have completed too. So thanks for watching Really appreciate it. As I said before subscribe like and all of those things and uh, I'll catch you very soon with another watercolor There I go bumping that camera again. Bye for now